Okay, there's been a lot of confusion with matching graphs of, let's say, um, position and velocity, and understandably, this is a tough concept, guys. So let's see if we can talk through these. These graphs may look familiar. Um, this is, in fact, from our matching activity, so this might just be a good recap for you of what you got to by the end of that class period of kind of struggling through this, or maybe this is, maybe you never really felt like you got it, and this can help you make sense of it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and show six graphs on my screen here. And the first three are position graphs. This first row, position graphs. And then the second row are velocity graphs. And we're going to try to match them. Um, so each position graph has one velocity graph that corresponds with it. So you really need to be able to go back and forth both ways. So I guess I'll talk through maybe the first one, one way, and then kind of switch it up so that you can hear how I think when I go both ways. Um, so I really think of this in terms of, you've got to remember what the derivative is. If the velocity is the derivative of the position, then we have to be thinking that our slope of our position graph, because derivative is slopes, is our velocity graph. So the first way I start this is I just generalize, like in our first graph here, it is going down the entire time. It changes how it's going down because my slope is steeper, let's say right here, than it is right here where it's a less steep and there, wait, it goes to like zero for an instant and then it's like back to getting steeper if I'm thinking kind of like the tangent line at a point. But it's going down the entire time. So I'm not looking for a velocity graph that goes down. I'm looking for a velocity graph where all of my velocity values, all of my y values, um, because the graph is plotting the slope at each point are below the x-axis. So I'm just going to generally look for, um, whoops, I'm going to look for my x-axis. So my x-axis, it looks like, is right here. And I want to be, let's get it right on there. I want to be below the x-axis. So that wouldn't work because I have this piece right here where I'm above the x-axis. This would correspond with a downward slope on my position because my velocity values are negative. My slopes are all negative. This would also be negative, but I've got positive velocity from 1 to 3 in this velocity graph, which means that my function would have to be increasing in some way between 1 and 3, which doesn't happen on that graph. So maybe you're already looking and seeing that the second graph here, I'm just looking right here and seeing that that graph is generally increasing from 1 to 3, which is matching up with my velocity values of greater than 0 from 1 to 3 on this graph down here, okay? And then, let's see if it matches with the others. We said that it's decreasing, means that my velocity would be negative, and then decreasing here, velocity negative. So right now, I'm saying that we've got a pretty good match going, I think, between these two. Position graph eight and velocity graph five. Okay, now I digressed from the first one. We were looking for velocity all negative. Maybe you're already looking at that bottom row. And noticing that this one also has both positive velocity from 0 to 2 and negative velocity from 2 to 4. I was looking for all negative. We'll jump over to this last graph, and there we go. There's my all negative velocity. I'm below the x-axis for the entire interval from 0 to 4, which means my graph is decreasing for the entire time. So I'm putting this one... That last velocity graph with my first position graph. And that leaves only one match, but let's look through it. So maybe I'll go from velocity to position this time. Because we've already identified that our velocity is negative. Whoops, I'm looking at the middle graph here. Velocity is positive. I'm above, above the x-axis from 0 to 2. Which means that my graph should be increasing from 0 to 2. So if you take a look at this last one. Do you see that I'm generally increasing? And right now I'm not worried about how I'm increasing. I'm just, the graph is gro going up, um, which means I have positive slopes all the way from 0 to 2. And then if I go from 2 to 4, well, there it is. It is going down, which indicates that I'd have a negative velocity right here. Okay? So hopefully that makes a little more sense. Let's get a little more into it. I've got two more practice um, little sets for you. And I think they're going to help us work out the details. So let's talk about the details. In other words, if we look at the first two, again, I've got position graphs in the first row and velocity in the second row. We're going to try to match. Um, if I look at the first two, I'm going to notice that the position graphs, the position is increasing from 0 to 2 and increasing from 0 to 2. So both of them should have positive velocity. Well, there we go. Positive velocity, positive velocity above my x-axis from 0 to 2. 
Now if I look at the rest of it, decreasing, decreasing, negative velocity, negative velocity. So that's actually not enough for me to look at just that and figure out between these two, because it appears that either velocity graph could match with either position graph, looking at just positives and negatives. The other thing I didn't point out in my first slide, but maybe we should look at this, and you might want to go back and make sense of this, is that when my velocity is zero, my graph of my position has a slope of zero. Well, think about that. what that means. So an x-intercept at my velocity graphs means my slope is zero. It's got to have a horizontal tangent. So usually that means that my graph is like at a maximum or a minimum and turning around my position graph. Okay, stay tuned for more on that. But again, both of these fit that. So I'm going to have to look at the details of the slope. So if I look at the difference between my two velocity graphs, well, my velocity here, while it's positive from 0 to 2, is increasing and then decreasing. That means that at 0, my slope is actually 0. The steepest slope is at 1, and then it goes to 0 at 2. Well, slope is 0 at 2, but here my steepest slope is actually at 0. At time 0, my slope is steepest, and my slope is gradually decreasing the whole time. So I've got to look at these and think about that tangent line, and maybe it helps you to zoom in on this graph. And like take a pencil or something is what I like to do, and I don't know how to do it with this iPad that I'm working on right now, so I'm going to let you do that. Um, but I like to sort of picture what does the slope look like at this point, and as I go, is my slope getting steeper if I look at little tiny segments of slopes? And it is, because right here my slope is zero, and my slope is increasing until... Well, about here, and then what happens if I go up here? Well, the slope is gradually decreasing until it's zero. So the slope is increasing. Compare that to this one, where at the beginning my slope is steepest, and my slope is gradually, and maybe you're kind of taking a pencil and moving along that curve, you're gradually getting to be closer and closer to zero. So if I take those into details, you can look at the second half of the graphs as well and make some sense of it for yourself. But if I take those details into account, you should be doing a connection where you're putting these two. Nope, I was wrong with that. Um, sorry, not looking closely enough. The steepest one is here. These two should go together, and those two should go together. Because my steepest section is at 1 here, and that's the steepest. It starts at 0, increases, and then goes to 0 again. So um, that's a direct connection from the first one, the one right above it. This position graph matches with the velocity graph right below it. Okay, let's try one more. I've got a set of two for us to look at, and we'll see what sense we can make of this. <clears throat> so again, I need to make sense of this, but an, on initial thought, I've got a slope of a slope for my position graph that's negative and a slope for my position graph that's negative, which means my velocity is entirely under the x-axis, and both of those match. So if I had extras, I'd have to throw some out. But then I've got to look at the actual velocities and sort of make sense of them. And in this case, again, I'm going to kind of walk through how my velocity is changing. My velocity is going to 0 at 2 here, and my velocity is at 0 at uh, 0 and 4 in this one. So my steepest velocity is at 2 versus this is my least steep velocity, the steepest or the greatest speed that we like to say it has if we're thinking the absolute value of velocity. Um, but the steepest part is negative 2 or is at negative 2. It's at x equals 0 and x equals 4. The speed is negative 2. So that would be right here. Is that steeper? Or is this the steepest? Because that's the difference between these two velocity graphs. And it appears that the steepest part actually is right here and right here. And my velocity goes to 0. So there's my 0 and my steepest sections. Versus this one, I think the steepest is right here. If you look at the beginning and the end, the velocity is pretty close to 0. And then it gets steeper. So there's my velocities of 0. And there's my steepest velocity here because it's negative 2, my steepest part of my position graph, because it's the greatest speed, which means the most negative number in this case since I'm looking at a velocity graph. 
I'm not sure if that makes any sense. Um, I hope that helps a little bit because I know that we've had some struggles. I'd encourage you to go to the Google Doc that I shared with you. There's a great resource where you get to match position and velocity graphs. Really, really good practice for you. It doesn't say specifically that we're talking about position and velocity. It tells you you're matching a function to its derivative. So put it in context if it helps you. But it's really great practice. They give you four at a time of each to try to match. So that would be my suggestion to get a little more practice on this. Hope that helped.